Why? Why? Why do I do this to myself? Excuse me while I try to convince myself not to purchase this book and hold off the stays just so I can wait till the book gets here to make the stays. Um, I'm a... a return to what I was doing previously. <laughs> I am looking through my books, I've been taking notes, and I am trying to figure out these stays. So the stays I'm making um, were worn by Queen Elizabeth, um, and they're her effigy stays. And she died in 1603, and these stays were made for her in 1603, to be, to be worn in her casket, basically. And that's one of the reasons why they survive so well. They're actually, I believe, either the only one or one of two items of clothing that we know belong to her that have survived today. So I'm going with the effigy bodies and I'm just trying to figure out which pattern to use. Unfortunately, I do not have in, to, in my possession Patterns of Fashion 5, which is a book um, by, the, <laughs> by the school historical dress that came out recently. I am using one, the Tudor Taylor, which is, of course I had to do the interlibrary loan to do and to get this book. I am actually really happy that I pushed myself to go that far as to get this book because it has a lot of valuable information that I need. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure how historically accurate it is because they don't go that in depth, but they do enough for me to at least gain some information on, on how to make them. For those of you who don't know, when you're getting patterns uh, based on historical garments, each like from different places, it might be the same object, but not all the patterns are going to be the same. They're each going to have slight different variations. So currently I am debating whether or not to use the pattern given, me, given to me for the effigy stays from this book or from over here on my computer. Now I'm not going to show you my computer too much. I have a membership with Foundations Revealed, which is an online website that also has a sister site that's connected to it called your wardrobe unlocked and it is basically a community of professionals and they don't only do corsets they do also other historical clothing but it is a nice community full of professionals and i'm able to gain a lot of resources and information from these people and that's why i'm not going to show you the site because you have to pay a membership to really see to really go into it however if you are interested they do have a couple of free articles on their web website and I actually do highly suggest it if you're interested because they have a lot of good te technical knowledge from from people who are passionate about, about historical fashion and they do all this research. Now, they have a pattern on this site because someone wrote an article on the effigy stays and the pattern is slightly different than the Tudor Taylor book. For instance, on the computer um, from the website, their pattern has the center front slightly curved at the top instead of straight down. So I'm, I've been trying to print out this pattern, but for some reason my, my printer, which is right there in the shadows, is not allowing me to do that. So I'm gonna figure it out and then I'll get back to you. Well, this isn't working. Great. Right now it looks very demonic because I had switched it to black and white. Or it was a nice pretty pencil outline on top of um, on top of a grid, and it was all in gray. So I guess the, I guess the computer was telling me, hey, since it's gray, it's color. Therefore, if you want to change it to black and white, it's gonna turn like this demonic. I am currently out of colored ink. So I've been reduced to this, and I am questioning if I should just print it out. I can still see the outline of each piece, and I can still see the grid. It just might waste a bit of black ink. I have succeeded in getting ink for my printer, so I put the colored ink in the printer, the cartridge is in, and I am ready to print. Say hi, Pedro. And 
darn it. Probably had it accidentally set to the automatic setting, which is to fit everything on one page. Welcome. I have my tape. I have my paper. And then over here in the corner, I don't know if I showed you yet. The white linen, this is a mix, blend, and then I have the red. And this red is gorgeous. And every time I look at it, I want to do a little happy dance. When I bought it at Joanne's, I, uh, I did a little happy dance in the aisle. <laughs> uh, when I found it, because it was actually pretty tricky. The problem was that I, um, at first, in my first trip to Joanne's, I couldn't find the right shade of red and linen. Um, it was way too dark for the embroidery, for the embroidery thread. Because remember, it's two different shades of red. My second trip to Joanne's, I was able to find this red, this luscious red. And it actually might be 100% linen, however, I have no idea because it wasn't labeled. It's like almost completely perfect, like it's blending in. And over here I have the zip ties. Now I got these at Home Depot and I'm pretty disappointed because I was not able to purchase synthetic whalebone. And I would have if I have if I have the money and the budget for it. However, because I have one, it has to be shipped here, and two, it's a type of material that's a little bit pricey. Plus three, I need a lot of it. I was not able to buy it. So I am currently printing out a really, really big pattern because it is a, a couple patterns combined in one. It's the farthingale with the waistband and two options for rolls. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, to cut these out today or do anything with this today yet. So that's happening over there, but it's like 32 pages because of how massive the farthingale is. And also because it's two different options. So I feel a bit bad, but I reuse my paper. It should be fine. But what I did realize while I was printing this out, that this pattern that I that I printed last night might be off. And I realized that when I was playing around with this one, which is the farthingale pattern. And as you can see, there's no white edges around here. However, when I was doing this pattern, which is the stays, there's some white edges that I did not account for that added that added onto the thing while I was trying to scale it up. So I'm gonna go back and reprint this and see what uh, if there's a major difference between the reprint and the print I have right now.
I printed out a new pattern of the stays. And as you can see, I'm about to pull it up. There is a significant, di significant <laughs> difference. And I'm wondering if it's gonna fit me now and if I, and how much I actually have to alter it once I make the mock-up. So, I was supposed to be making the mock-up. I had the pattern all done, and I, I just had to grab fabric and start cutting and marking and then following the instructions and figuring out how to sew it properly. But then, as I was reading and researching, because I was supposed to be looking to be looking at the instructions and the resources on everything to do with the stays. I fell down a rabbit hole. <laughs> and by a rabbit hole, I mean I I uh, finally tackled and uh, fig uh, on figuring out how to design the dress. I did not realize how much Elizabeth's wardrobe on lockbook by Jenna Arnold and another person, um, how much in depth it went and like, I knew it went a lot in depth, but I didn't realize how many images there was. And one image I stumbled upon is um, something that really struck me because I have been thinking about the stress and I haven't been able to sit down and actually really uh, draw it out because I've been struggling to, to picture what these dresses could be like and how I could push it because it's theatrical and I want it to be something um, not historical, like direct historical recreation, like there's a portrait, and I look at the portrait, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll make that dress, but more of a something that's more unique to me, but holds a lot of these historical elements. It's a bit long, but that's actually pretty similar to the original, which I like. I know the front's supposed to go flat, and that the purpose of the stays is to support your bust, and not and um, have a flat front. And also the purpose of stays is just to be like a foundation, like a firm foundation for which the dress can go over top, which I find really interesting. And it's gonna be a bit of a struggle because I have never made stays before, which is which is why I have a mock-up. Now, I'm already noticing things I need to be fixed. Most likely, I'm gonna have to shorten these straps to see if these need to be thinner or something. The biggest thing I found with this pattern was that for me, it's way too big in the back. And because if it's so big, it's causing crinkles to happen. My dress form has a shorter torso than I do in real life. So I have a, I'm gonna have to have a little bit of a fitting battle too. <laughs> to actually get it to fit me. <laughs> right now I am, one of my biggest concern, concerns is the tabs. I like how big they are, but when, the more I tighten, the more smaller some of the ones in the back get. And I really don't like the look of small tabs. Tabs are a lot bigger and I really, really, really want to keep that beautiful shape. Um, when you look at the effigy stays and you lay them out, um, this, these front, this front, what, what do I call this? Curve? Dip? Whatever. The front, the front, 
curve dip um, is super long and very dramatic when you space it out. I'll show you guys an image later. But when I was using this pattern, which is from a lady um, who, who posted an article on Foundations Reveal, she had it way longer, more accurate to the garment. So th that's the pattern I ended up using. Obviously it's a different size than me, so the pattern ended up being bigger on me, so that's why I'm picking it in so much. But I really do like this, this front and how long it goes. Um, I think the main reason why people make this front so short is because sitting down. Now, my, um, I have not seen too many people attempt a wheel farthingale, in fact, at all. And this time period that I am doing is so bizarre because not that many people are doing it. And most people are in love with uh, Regency and 1700s and not too many people venture around this time that I'm doing for some reason. And if they do, they don't do a wheel farthingale. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that this Oh look, a pin sticking out, that's dangerous. I'm pretty sure that this long curve, ta curve front thing works best with the wheel farthingale and that it won't push into me when I sit down be because maybe it works better on top of the farthingale. So that's my analysis. I hope everything works fine. <laughs> And I'll get back to you all soon. I have I have a lot to do. <laughs>
doing it in white. I think I'm gonna undo all this black thread and sew white thread through and see how it looks because I don't have any more scraps. made my sample. I made the stitch, the stitch length smaller and as you can see this is the red side and then this is the white side. Now comparing it to it, I think I like the white a lot better than the red and my mother agree, my mother says so as well. Um, only thing is that, that means I have to make sure that my stitches are perfect. That everything is perfect. Which is gonna be fine. I'm still worried that it might be a bit too flimsy, but we'll see. So I'm still working on the mock-up. I cut out the lining material. It's pinned onto the onto the onto the red material. And my original design was to have it be where you see the white of the stays, and then on the inside's red with red piping going around. But um, out, as I was cutting all this out, I realized I love the red so much that I'm going to change my design, and the red is going to be the outside. One thing though is because everything came out so big on me. I have, a, I have another feeling going on that m I might be able to have it be that my mock-up is my actual stays. Ladies and gentlemen, I am an idiot. Uh... <laughs> I'm a complete idiot. Okay, so this back piece is supposed to be cut on the fold. So this is supposed to be one piece, not two. It's currently raining outside, and there is a possibility of a, uh, not really, no, it's definite, but like, a hurricane's coming. It's fine. It's Florida. It's normal. What you gonna do? So, over here I have at least a tester, it's gonna be part of my mock-up, for the stays. And this is the back. As you can see, I already inserted a bunch of these zip ties to act as boning. And it's kind of firm. I really love how it looks. I don't know if this camera can really show you that well. But yeah, I'm doing it with machine rather than by hand because I have I don't have time. I would love for this whole costume to be by hand, but realistically that is not in my future. <laughs> I haven't been doing much recently um, because I've had a, a family situation. My brain's been in a like a little weird and I started school yesterday and I have someone coming up who may come over later to see if I can fix something for her so that's like a little side job um so I gotta I gotta get stuff done and clean these floors because I do not want visitors to see the dog hair on the floor so I've done the front as you can see all of this very 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 straight stitching Oh, I love, I love just spreading my hand across it. I am convinced that my dog belongs in a portraiture. And you too, because you're fluffy and, and cute and white and look at you. I've seen so many white fluffy dogs in portraits that you, you would fit in Pedro. You would fit in as well. It just Paco has like a, has the face. Right, Paco? Paco! Okay, whatever, dude.